This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. All right, we're now going to change tack completely and look at uh, share options and option pricing, uh, which have in themselves nothing to do with uh, what we've been doing earlier, cost of capital, project appraisal, and so on. Although, as you'll see, uh, the following chapter, we can then relate the technique to it. Uh, but here, uh, I need to explain what we mean by share options, and then the arithmetic, the what we call option pricing. And what a share option is, there are two types. First of all, a call option is the right to buy a share in a company at a fixed price on a future date. And what that means is, just suppose for instance, uh, a company, there are shares I would rather like to buy and the current price of the share uh, is two dollars per share. And I think the price is going to go up. You know, you all know share prices go up and down. I think the price is going to go up. And so, of course, it'd be quite good if I buy the shares today at two dollars and the price does go up to, let's say, five dollars. I buy it too, I can sell it five and make a nice big profit. Now, but suppose I haven't yet got the money, you know, I'm going to get some money uh, coming to me in a few months' time, but I haven't yet got the money, so I can't afford to buy any shares now. And obviously, when I get the money in, let's say, a month's time, the price might be a lot higher. Well, I'm. Somebody might be selling a call option is available at what we call an exercise price of let's say $2.50 in a month's time. Now, what that would mean is if I had that option, it gives me the right in a month's time to buy shares at a fixed price of $2.50. And so in a month's time come along, and if, the, if I was right and the price has gone up to uh, ooh, $4 or something, oh, I've got the right to buy it at $2.50 in a month's time. And I would. I'll buy it at two fifty, sell it at four dollars, and I've made a profit. Of course, the share price. I, I think the share price is going to go up, uh, but clearly, you're never sure it could go down. Maybe in a month's time, the share price hasn't changed at all, or it's actually gone down to a dollar. Well, I have the right to buy a share at a fixed two fifty, but I don't have to use it. And so if in a month's time the share price had gone up to four dollars, fine. I'll use my option. I'll buy it two fifty and sell it four dollars. But if in a month's time the share price has gone down to a dollar, of course I'd be mad to pay two dollars fifty for it. And so I just won't use the option. If I want the shares, I'll buy them at a dollar. I'll throw this right away. It's the right to buy shares at a fixed price on a future date. Well, of course, that's lovely. I think the price is going up. Can't afford to buy them now. Fine, buy these options. Uh, but they're not free. I would have to pay for the option. We pay now for the option. Uh, 
It's called the premium. And if the uh, seller, if the seller wants or is charging 40 cents for the option, I pay the 40 cents. I then have the right to buy these shares at the fixed price. It's my choice later whether I exercise or I don't. But that premium, I'll have had to pay whatever. I pay that now, whether or not I later choose to exercise. So that's what a call option is. The right to buy a share at a future date for a fixed price. It will be our choice on that future date whether we exercise it or not. If we want, we buy it at that fixed price. If we don't, we just throw the piece of paper away. But I will have had to have paid for that option. Uh, they sold on the stock exchange. Um, and we have to pay for it now. And that premium, um, as I said, it's payable whether or not later I actually choose to exercise my right, exercise the option. So that's what it is. And that's what we call a call option. Um, also available are what we call put options. And exactly the same idea, but a put option is the right to sell a share at a fixed price on a future date. I'll give you an example of why you might find this useful. Um, suppose my mother died and in her will she's left me a thousand shares in the company. At the moment, the share price is five dollars. I don't want these shares, I want to sell them. Uh, but the problem is, there's legal formalities to go through. Um, and I can't sell them for another month. And I'm worried the price of these shares will go down. I want to sell them today at five dollars. But I'm not going to be able to sell them for a month. And there is that risk. The price may have gone down to only $3 in a month. And I, I'll be really upset. Well, maybe I can, there's a put option available where I can buy the right to sell at maybe a fixed Let's say $4.50 in one month's time. Now, I'm so scared. The price is $5 a month. I'm so scared it's going to go down or not. I might get this option, a put option, the right to sell. And in a month's time, I have the right to sell shares at $4.50. And so if the price of the share, remember at the moment I've got these shares and they're worth $5, if the price has gone down to only $2, no problem. I've got the right to sell them at $4.50. If the price is higher than $4.50, uh, then I'll just throw away the piece of paper. Obviously I'd rather sell them at a higher price. But this option would mean that in a month's time I'm guaranteed to be able to sell them for at least 450. Because if the price is lower, I'll exercise the option. Uh, now again, I don't get that right free. I'll have to pay a premium now for the option. So I have to pay for this right. You know, maybe they're charging 20 cents or something. <coughs> uh, and I may end up losing it. You know, if the, um, if the price in a month's time is uh, higher than 450, I'll throw the option away. 
better to sell at the higher price, I'll still know I've had to have paid the premium. So in that sense, it's a little bit like insurance. Uh, pay the premium, I might end up having wasted money, but at least it's made sure that I'm going to be able to sell for at least whatever the exercise price is, 450. So that's what share options are. And they are traded on the stock exchange. If a major companies, you can buy call options, the right to buy a share at a fixed price. You can buy put options, the right to sell a share at a fixed price. So just check you've got me. Look at example one. Oh, it would be very embarrassing if we uh, don't get this one right. The share price of Madrid PLC is currently $2. Johnson holds a call option with an exercise price of $1.80, exercisable in three months' time. So we've got a piece of paper that gives us the right to buy shares at one eighty in three months. What are we going to do if the share price in three months' time is A, $2.50? Well, I have the right to buy the share at $1.80. And so what I would do is I would exercise the option. I'll therefore pay $1.80 per share. And it's then up to me if I want to keep the shares fine. If I want, pay $1.80 a share and immediately sell them. Price is two fifty. I'll sell at two fifty and make a nice profit. And it's my choice. I don't have to sell them, but I don't have to keep them. The point is, I have the right to buy them at one eighty, and I would. And some people use options for gambling, effectively. If I had to pay a premium, but the premium I pay for the option will be a lot less than actually having bought the shares. On the other hand, B. Same thing, but what would we do? do, do, do blah, blah, blah. What do we do if the share price in three months' time is one hundred and fifty? Well, it's pointless paying one hundred and eighty for a share that um, you could buy for one hundred and fifty. We do not exercise the option. Throw the piece of paper away. If I do want the shares, I'll buy them at whatever the price is. One hundred and fifty. It's cheaper. If I don't want the shares, I don't buy them. That's my choice. But I won't exercise the option. But appreciate, whatever happens in three months' time, I don't know what's going to happen in three months' time, obviously. When I buy the option, we've no idea what's going to happen in the future. Either way round, I will have had to pay for the option, for the piece of paper giving me the right to buy the shares at 180. Now, I keep saying you'll have to pay for an option. Nobody's going to give you that piece of paper free. And you'll see we then move on to option prices. We'll have to pay for it whether or not we end up exercising it. And the question is, how much would people charge? How much, how much would I have to pay for the option? Now, the various factors will affect the amount I'll have to pay, but the most obvious factor is the current share price and the exercise price. See what I mean in example two. The share price of Lisbon is currently 250. So that's today's price on the stock exchange. There's a call option available. So an option that gives me the right to buy at a fixed price. The exercise price will be $2. So this option will give me the right to buy that share for $2. Uh, I said earlier, on a future date, 
Here, suppose it was exercisable immediately. Exercisable. Exercisable, <laughs> I'm going to try and spell it immediately. Now, that would be a bit silly, but still. How much do you think you'd have to pay for that option? If you buy the option, you have the right to buy a share immediately for only two dollars. Well, surely, the price you'd have to pay, the premium, nobody gives anything free. Uh, if you can buy a share for two dollars immediately, instead of, and you could then sell it for two fifty, you'd have to pay the difference of fifty cents. That would be the price. Otherwise, you'd be absolutely daft. If you could buy this for only 10 cents, it'd be daft. Pay 10 cents, then pay $2 to buy a share that's worth $2.50. Well, I mean, that couldn't happen. Whoever's selling you, the dealer, would be charging 50 cents. However, that would be all a bit silly. You know, who on earth would even bother buying it? That's what, if you want the share, buy it directly. Uh, but the point is, as I've already said, where call options become relevant is where you have an exercise price, say $2. But instead of being exercisable immediately, it's exercisable maybe in three months' time on a future date. And so other factors come into play. And if you look at the uh, over the page, the factors that will affect the, share, uh, the option price, certainly the current share price, and certainly the exercise price. Also, though, the time to expiry of the option. What I mean by that, if the option's exercisable in three months' time, or four months' time, or five months' time, it'll make a difference, because the longer there is to the exercise date, the more chance there is of the share price having risen. So it will affect the share price. And uh, the option price, it'll be your pardon. And uh, the risk-free interest rate. Now the reason that's relevant is to do with the time value of money. You know, exercising in one month's time, in two months' time, in three months' time. Well, there's the time value of money, you know, effectively discounting. Uh, you're paying a premium now, you're paying out for the share in a month, in two months, three months. Well, the rate of interest is relevant depending on the period. And finally, what we call the volatility of the share price. Uh, what I mean by that, if the share price has always been 250, if it's hardly moved in the past, it's not very likely to move much in the future. In all probability, Three months' time, it'll still be about 250. On the other hand, if the share price has moved up and down a lot in the past, chances are it'll move a lot up and down in the future. There's a much greater chance that the share price will have gone up in three months' time. And that'll affect how much you have to pay for it. So those are the factors. And in the next lecture on this chapter, I'll show you how Mr. Black and Mr. Scholes came up with a formula that using those factors allows us to calculate the price we have to pay for an option, the premium. And dealers use this formula when they're quoting you a price for this call option. They will use this formula to calculate how much you're going to charge. So that's the next lecture. I'll show you the formula, which looks horrendous, but it really ends up being calculator work.